Hi, this is Bill Guesswitch. In this mini-series, I want to talk to you about Blazor WebAssembly authentication. In addition to that, I will include topics on JavaScript and debugging. And this is part one, the intro. The agenda for the video, and it's going to be a mini-series, so it's not just one video, is going to be um, to talk about authentication from both the server and the client side. On the server side, we'll talk about core identity, creating a JSON web token, JWT for short, and APIs both when you um, want to only have an authenticated uh, request and when you want to allow any type of request. So in an example of login or register where you don't have a token yet, how to allow those through, but authenticate everything else. The next section will cover the client side. There we'll talk about register and login from the user side. We'll talk about authenticating uh, using a token and uh, implementing what's called the authentication state provider. It's a big word. It's really not that uh, intimidating. And then we'll show some functionality based, based on the authentication. As I showed in the as I'll show in the sample app, um, we have a couple of uh, navigation menus that show up or not and a survey that show up or not whenever you um, are authenticated or not. So we'll show you that. And then we'll also show some additional WebAssembly, Blazor WebAssembly topics, sharing data among the components using JavaScript, as we just mentioned, and then also debugging a Blazor WebAssembly app. So the way I split up the videos, originally I had um, was going to do uh, one or two. Uh, it turned out to be way too long, so I split them up. There's an intro, which is part one of this video, which I'll give you um, just a quick overview like I'm doing here, and then a quick overview of the app. Then in part two, uh, I will get, show you core identity and JWT and APIs from the server side. I'm really setting up the server. And then we'll, uh, part three, we'll test the APIs using Postman just to make sure that they all work before we get on the client side of things. Um, show you some how to use the bearer token from that perspective. Then we'll do the client setup. That's going to be both the server setup and the client setup are going to be longer videos, but it's important to kind of watch those all the way through. Um, we'll talk through authentication setup, how to use it, how to um, apply it to different areas of the app. And then in part five, we'll talk about the additional WebAssembly topics, the things like using JavaScript, debugging, um, and sharing data among components. And that's really going to be the mini-series. Um, so stay tuned for all of those. These are all the resources that I referenced along the way um, throughout the different um, uh, videos and uh, wanted to give them credit. I'll include all of these in every of the descriptions relative to the it, as well as I'll be including the um, the link to the to the code um, as well, because I am going to take you through the code as opposed to type it all out. It would be way too long if I typed it all out uh, on the video, so I wanted to do it that way. So let's get into the um, sample app. Show you what the sample app looks like. So let's take a look at the app that we're going to um, build or look at how to build during this mini series. Here we are in Chrome. We've got a very simple app, only one uh, navigation bar menu item right now. Hello world, welcome to your new app and a login and register. So we'll go ahead and log in. Let me just set that to, well, we'll leave it at FF, log in. And you see it says, welcome Fred, log out now. It added this survey and it adds two additional items. So if I log back out, notice they go away. I log in and they're back. Okay, so that's the first thing. We're just gonna walk through logging in, logging out, um, and how authentication affects or how you can use authentication to affect what gets displayed to the user. Now that's being um, handled through a combination of some server-side um, logic relative to JSON web tokens and some client-side, how you authenticate the token and go from there. So we'll, we'll look at that. The other thing we are going to take a look at is when you go into counter uh, previously, when you went to counter, the counter would reset to zero. Where, if you notice here, I go to six. If I go back to home and I go back to counter, notice it stays at six. And then click me, 
so on and so forth and it and it will stay at the number that we uh, set it to so we'll talk about how do you share information across uh, razor components and then finally um, here in the fetch data I want to show you also how to debug WebAssembly apps since they're still not quite production ready yet some of the tools that we use on the server side are not available on the client side so I um, want to show you a couple of ways that you can debug a WebAssembly app and if I go to fetch data you see it says paused in the debugger and if I go over here to this other tab I actually had a breakpoint set right after I loaded up the forecast and over here if I look at scope and I look under this I see the forecasts and here are the different forecasts um, and the information so I can get a look at what's going on in here and this is essentially the Blazor uh, WebAssembly app and I'll show you how to do that it's not as straightforward as I'd like it to be but it actually is pretty effective to help you debug the other thing um, is I'll show you how to write to the uh, console by using a JavaScript. You may need to jump over to JavaScript periodically for various things. I'll show you how to call JavaScript from within a WebAssembly app. And in this case, I wrote your username is FF um, from the Blazor WebAssembly app to the Java, I'm sorry, to the Chrome console using JavaScript. So we'll show you that as well. So let's go ahead and continue the uh, let's continue the running. And if we go back here, you see I've got the um, weather forecast was loaded. I go over to counter. Notice it's still 10. I can click and go to home and then we'll log out. So that's everything we're going to show you. So in the next video, we'll get started with jumping into Visual Studio. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.